So hello everyone. I was going to uh, change the water in my bird feeder for my hummingbirds, but it's been invaded by bees. First I thought it was wasps, but it's just like a bunch of bees all curled up inside of there. I try to spray it down with water, like full blast with a hose on it. It doesn't matter. It's just like they're still like crawled up in there. I guess I'm gonna have to wait till the evening time for them to chill out and not be wanting to be in there. It just has been so dry here and dry here in beautiful sunny California <laughs> that I can see why the bees want to curl up inside of a hummingbird feeder but it doesn't make bode well for the hummingbirds because the hummingbirds come over here to feed off of it and then there's bees all clustered inside of it. It's like ridiculous. So yeah, I was gonna try and take it off of there but I'm not going to risk it. Um, I've been stung by bees before, but I don't want to chance it. Um, I thought it was hornets, because we did have a hornet's nest around here somewhere, but it looks like it's just bees, guys. I don't want to get too close to it and get stung, but let me see if I can get on this chair and get a closer look of what's going on. My battery's running out, so that's perfect. So yeah, here we go. And they're around here. They're all over the fucking place. I mean, don't get me wrong, I like bees and everything, but my god, how are the hummingbirds going to get, you know, any food? So I'm probably going to have to leave this up till the evening when it's cooler, and then, then they won't be there to bother the hummingbirds tomorrow. <laughs> Just thought I'd share that with you, these little things I go through. Um, I don't know how to avoid having these bees here. I think I might want to find something. Is something that I can hang up to prevent them from coming around the hummingbird feeder. I don't know. If anybody knows, leave it in the comment section below. <laughs> so yeah, just a little tidbit of what's going on out here in nature. <coughs> Trying to help out the hummingbirds and the bees are invading. That's ridiculous. I like bees. Bees are good for the environment, but I think they just... I mean, these are wasps, probably. Oh, God. Okay, I'm seeing them now better clearly. With more like a wasp. I'll probably come back and do some research on the difference between a hornet, a wasp, and a bee. That would be a good show to do. Alrighty guys. Stay away from the hornets <laughs> and the bees. Well, bees are okay if you just don't mess with them. And same with these hornets and everything. They're okay as long as you're not messing with them. And I'm not going to mess with them. <laughs> but what I'll probably do is find out some more research about the hornet, the bee, and the wasp, and the difference between the two. Because I think that's fascinating. I never took the time out to learn the difference between all three. Um, yeah, so see you soon. <laughs> Peace. Look at them all huddled up in there. Inside of there. It's crazy. Hello, my name is Dark Moon Doll, and today I want to continue talking about the problem we are having with bees slash wasps slash hornets at our bird feeder for our hummingbirds. Um, as you'll see, I'll present to you uh, video footage of what's going on. We tried some things that we thought would help, but it, to no avail it wouldn't help. Um, I have some suspicions as to why the bee problem is excessive slash hornet problem is excessive right now. And I'll share that with you. Let me grab my notes because I want to read to you about the differences between bees, hornets, and wasps. So, I'll be right back. It'll only take me a little bit because I'm right around, right behind you. So, here we go. I uh, found this. I found this uh, interesting little article, and I'll leave the link, the link in the description below. Sorry, I can't talk really well today because it's hot. Yeah, sunny California. But anyway. <clears throat> Here's it, here it is, the difference between bees, wasps, and hornets. So bees are furry and wasps are not. Bees use pollen to make and eat honey, while wasps are carnivores. Hornets are typically black and white, or black and yellow, while bees are usually a more golden color. Bees die when they sting, but wasps, hornets, and bumblebees don't. They also have differences in nesting and protection of the whole of their territory. <clears throat> First, there's an easy way to tell between honeybees 
most common and wasp bees are furry and wasps are smooth and generally hairless. So the wasp bees, wash dash bees, are furry. So bees are furry and wasps are smooth and generally hairless. Honey bees will generally leave you alone unless you bother them and will then leave you alone if you stop and they die shortly after they sting. Wasps, by contrast, do not die after stinging. They are known to attack unprovoked and especially if their nests are disturbed, will chase people hundreds of yards once in attack mode. Ooh. Also bees collect pollen and pollinate flowers. Wasps are carnivorous, eat other insects, and do not help with pollination. There are also a couple of variations on wasps. Hornets, which are larger and have black and white rings instead of black and yellow, and yellow jackets, which closely resemble wasps but nest underground instead of above ground. Like wasps, hornets and yellow jackets can sting multiple times. Their venom and honeybee venom can be deadly for those with allergies and not exactly pleasant for those without. Also, let's not forget about the other type of bumble, the other type of bee, the bumblebee. They may have the cutest name, but you'll never know one when you see one by the fact that it's absolutely huge, very loud in flight, and capable of inducing panic attacks in otherwise rational adults. They have black and yellow stripes and pollinate like honeybees. But like wasps and their cousins, bumblebees can sting you as many times as they like. So that's a little bit of an uh, overview of what I'm dealing with here. <laughs> um, and this is telling you the difference between all three of them. Um, I knew about the honeybee, um, but I didn't know about the difference between the hornets and the wasps. So this is good information. And I don't know, maybe you guys already knew this, but I didn't. I have a little drink out of my sparkling water. Not so sparkling right now. <laughs> this is some sparkling spring water. It's really hot out right now. So I'm gonna take you over to the hummingbird feeder so you can see it. See for yourself what I'm talking about. So, all right, I'll be right back. So hello, here I am over by the hummingbird feeder. We relocated it. Um, we put it over here by this window. This is where my son's window is. Um, you can still see there's like a bee in there. I don't know if you can see that. If I can get up higher, but there's a bee inside of there. Earlier there was like a cluster of bees inside of one little feeder thing. But it seems like they've calmed down on the feeder. Or maybe not. Here's one over here. But yeah, got to be careful. You don't want to. I don't want to get stung by a wasp or a uh, hornet or a honeybee, for that matter. Uh, I've been stung by bees before, and I didn't have an allergic reaction to it. But I don't want to chance it. Uh, yeah, I usually just avoid the bees. Try to give them their distance. <laughs> Because the only reason why the bees, are, I think, are at the hummingbird feeder clustering over there. There was much more of these bees over here uh, yesterday and the day before. So we used to have it over here, over on that, by that window, and now it's over here. The reason why we moved it is because, see there's more coming over. Move over a little bit. The reason why we moved it is because it was suggested in this article that I read online talking about if you move the hummingbird feeder like a few feet away from its original location, then the bees, hornets, wasps are less likely to go and try to find it. They don't work as hard. Well, as you can see, that's, that didn't work with this in this situation. <laughs> so, I mean, I laugh because what else can you do? I'm not going to try and take that hummingbird feeder down. What I'm going to do is going to wait till the evening time. I'm going to take it down and leave it down for like a month maybe just to clear that out because I think the reason why there's so many honeybees and hornets and shit over by the hummingbird feeder is because look, look out here. It's fucking dry as a bone. It's dry as a bone out here. And this is about as much as they got. They've got these little penny, puny little little flowers. See there's little tiny bees coming on here too. Little tiny flowers. It's like a desert out here. And that's why these hummingbird I mean these honeybees and wasps are all over the place. Look it's, it's dry. I water this grass but it's still dry. 
And then the other day I saw a, oh, there's a bee again. But this is an onion blossom. And uh, when I was doing a video, I saw a hummingbird feeding off of it. And it's like, it's that bad, man. It's dry here. It's, it's fucking dry, see it? Dry, 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 dry. It's a few splashes of green here and there. But yeah, the temperature here is probably like uh, over 100 right now, so. But you know what? It's done good for the grapes. Look at those grapes. I'm going to harvest a bunch of them uh, before they go bad, you know. Freeze some, juice some, eat some. So yeah, maybe make a fun juicing video with them. That would be cool, wouldn't it? <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's show that I did today about... Um, What's happening with the hummingbird feeder is just crazy. Uh, and you know the even crazier thing is, if you're following my uh, uh, art talk shows, where I talk about that Cthulhu painting that I made for a friend of mine as a commission piece, and in exchange she's going to give me a hand crocheted hat. But get this, it's got the pattern of the bee, the honey bee on it all over the hat so this is really serendipitous and funny but not funny for the uh, hummingbirds because the hummingbirds really rely on that bird feeder um, there's other bird feeders in this neighborhood so I'm not too completely worried about the hummingbirds but they do like coming here and I'd like to have oh, get a little poked by this uh, <laughs> by the grapevine but anyway yeah I do want to um, provide the hummingbirds with food so that's why I did that research a little bit of research to find out more about what I can do there's another thing I can do let me sit down watch out I'm gonna make this swirl because I'm putting it on the tripod okay I warned you so let me get this on there Man, I am sweating sweating big time okay I get a little dizzy we're back we're back on air <laughs> so yeah um, Ooh, hot. Yeah, I wanted to bring this information to you because I'm sure there's people that are having the same problems with the hummingbird feeders, especially if you're in a really hot climate and um, there's no like flowers around. That's the problem. So uh, I'm trying to encourage the grass to grow back here <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to remember to water uh, as much as I can and I want to uh, invest in some more flowers to plant. Some flowers that are uh, I guess don't require too much water but I just want to be able to provide uh, nourishment for the honeybees another thing the reason why it's so dry back here and we have so many bees and wasps and all that shit is because um, yeah of course there's not enough flowers but also we used to have morning glories growing all over the place uh, but then People don't like how invasive that they are because they grow all over the place. But the one, one thing is, is that the morning glories provided uh, some nectar for the bees. So there was tons of humming, I mean ton, hummingbirds, tons of honeybees all over the morning glories and they never really bothered the, uh, the hummingbird feeder that much. You'd see a few come over there here and there, but not as much as it has been lately. It's just like a cluster. Uh, you didn't see the half of it by what I just showed you. The other day I was looking at it and it was just like they're all piled up into one little cup flower thing where you get the nectar, get the uh, food out, the water out of there for the hummingbirds. But they're all in there, jammed in one little thing. And then the, uh, one of the hummingbirds went over to feed and looked like it almost got stung. And it's kind of like, oh, fuck, you know. So that's why tonight I want to just take the, the feeder down and uh, wash it and put it away for like a month just until that situation clears up to the wasps to hunt the bees and all them find something else some other nourishment because I don't want the hummingbirds to get injured I don't know what kind of you know effect that being stung by a bee a wasp or a hornet has on a hum hummingbird if you guys know leave it in the comment section <laughs> it's not funny I'm just it's just comical how all this this, these things are happening you know <laughs> so yeah also there was another uh, thing that we could do and it's like smoke the bees out like if we took a pot we have like an aluminum pot if we put some herbs in there maybe um, 
probably rosemary or something like that, threw it in a pot and then lit it on fire, let it smoke up and put it underneath the feeder, that's another option. So <laughs> I think I might want to try that approach um, maybe when the feeder's not there and just maybe it'll smoke out a lot of the bees and they'll go on to another location maybe. But I, I, I don't even feel weird about doing that, but I know that's a technique that um, the beekeepers use. Um, I'm not a beekeeper, <laughs> but I've, uh, I've seen some videos about beekeeping and I read a little bit of stuff here and there online about beekeeping. So I know a little bit about it, I'm not an expert, but that was one of the tips that was used, uh, smoking them out to, you know, deter them from being in a certain location. So yeah, I feel like I'm melting out here. I want some more water here. So yeah, I'm sorry it's been so long since I've gotten back with a uh, show on this channel. It's been a while, but I thought I'd bring this towards you guys. Uh, I think this is some information that everybody can use. Uh. And if you can uh, spread it to your friends and family, that would be cool. Because, um, yeah, this is, it's crazy. It's just like so many bees and hornets and all that shit over there. It's it's too much. I mean, I don't mind seeing bees and all that, but when it's interfering the feeding of the hummingbirds, then that that's a problem. <laughs> so yeah, tonight that feeder's going down, getting put up for a month, and yeah, that's it. I don't want bees and wasps flying all over by my window. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Alrighty guys, thank you for joining me today on this little show just talking about the difference between bees, wasps, and hornets. And I hope this helps anyone out there who's having this problem. And uh, yeah, share it with your friends and family. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for the likes and shares. And thank you for your kind comments. Leave your comments down below. Like I said, share your story if you have one about this. I mean, do you have something similar going on with you where you're living? <laughs> I, I really think it has to do with the heat, it being so hot and drying things out, flowers mainly. And um, there not just being any flowers for the, uh, for the bees to feed on. There not being any food for the bees, you know, that's when they get desperate and they'll just go to any route or any means they can to get nourishment. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Alrighty, guys, I will see you guys soon. Uh, stay cool as you can if you're hot like me. It's hot. It's really hot here. It's crazy hot. I usually wear my hair down, but I have, I've got it. I've been having it up just to get shit done. It's just been so hot. So, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for joining me, and thank you for being so supportive of this channel, Dark Moon Doll. I really appreciate it, and look forward to more videos coming your way. You can check me out on, uh, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can. I've got an Instagram account. It's www.instagram.com slash darkmoondoll. I have a Twitter. It's www.twitter.com slash darkmoondoll. Um, yeah. I'm all over the place on my Facebook under www.trina.sandress at facebook.com. I'll put all these links. I will put all of these in the description below, all these links. Man, my, my brain's melting in the sun, so I'm going to get out of here. But yeah, that's what's going on. And I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope you have a blessed day. Peace.